Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now, with any operation that we have in mathematics or in general, we usually have a set of properties that's pretty easily confirmed or, or um, derived from the operation itself and the definition of that operation. And that's, that goes you know, just the same for these set operations that we talked about in the last video. We have properties and laws that are uh, consistent. They're identities throughout all sets that we're using. And it's good to be familiar with these so that you know kind of what it is that you can do. Sometimes you'll have this long string of set operations. You want to simplify it or you want to know what it means. And so it's good to know some of these equivalences. So I'm going to go over these laws here and, and we'll just basically talk about why they're true. And, and a lot of them are, are pretty clearly true, right? And it'll have a little bit of a taste of our, um, our properties of our propositions that we did in the section with propositions. A lot of these you can kind of see where the crossover is. Now the first one with sets is called the item potence law. Item potence. Okay. And what this basically says is that oh and here I'll I'll have R, S, and T are sets. Right, for all of these. What this basically says is that the union of S with itself is equal to the intersection of S with itself, and these are both just, just equal to S. Now, based on our definitions of these uh, operations, this should be pretty clear, right? We know that the union is going to be the set um, where all of the elements are in S or in S, so of course that's just going to be S. The intersection, that's the set of all elements that are in S and in S, right? And again, of course, that's just going to be S. Now, this may seem trivial, but this can be thought of as, you know, towards the end of an equation, sometimes you have an easy simplification, like 1 times 2 is 2. And that's, you know, kind of what's going on here. Sometimes we'll get down to S union S, and it's good to know right away that that's just going to be equal to S. No thought necessary. Now, we have commutative laws as well. Now, remember, a commutative law just means that the element can commute around the operation. So, for example, S union T and T union S are the same thing. And S intersection T is the same thing as T intersection S, right? The definition doesn't change for these operations based on which one is first, right? Order is not important. Now, when we get into more complicated things, it'll be a little bit different, but we'll get there. We have our associative, associative laws. And that basically says that S union with the set T union R, that's the same thing as S union T union R. And in fact, that's just the same thing as S union T union R, right? When we have the same set operation, if it's all unions or all intersections, the way that we associate it or where we put these, these parentheses doesn't change what's in the set, right? And this should make sense. This means everything that's in T or R and this means everything that's in S or this set that everything that's in T or R, right? The order doesn't change. And similarly, we have something with intersection. S intersection T intersection R is going to be the same thing as S intersection T intersection R, which again is just equal to S intersection T intersection R. All right? These are our associative laws for our set operations. Now, once we start mixing operations, we know it gets a little bit more complicated, and that's where our distributive laws kick in. Now, remember, in basic arithmetic, distributive law, that's like A times B plus C is AB plus AC, right? That's a distributive law with multiplication and addition. So these set operations, we have some similar laws. If I have some set R union S intersection T, right? This is different than my associative because I'm mixing two different operations. I can distribute this R union, right? So like I said in arithmetic, if this was R times S plus T, I would get R S, R times S plus R times T. Well, something similar happens here. This is R union S intersection R union T, right? So you can kind of think of it in the same way that we distribute multiplication and addition. This R union distributes to S and then distributes to T, and I keep this intersection in between those things. Now similarly, I have R intersection, S union T, is going to give me R intersection S union, R intersection T. 
And then we have several distributive laws with my difference operation, right? And these ones aren't quite as clear, although I guess I should uh, explain one of these first. R union S intersection T. So I have this S intersection T, that's the set of everything that's in both S and T. And I'm adding that to all elements that are in R, right? It's the union between these two. So that's the same thing as if I took all of the elements in R and S and all of the elements in R and T and intersection them together. All of the elements that are in R are going to be preserved because they're all over here and they're all over here, right? Just like they're preserved over here. And on anything that's in S and not in R and in T and not in R is going to be cut out by this intersection just like it would have been uh, on the left hand side. Okay. Now back to what I was saying, uh, we have these uh, distributive laws with our differences. The first one is if I have a, a difference on the right side. So let's look at if I have R union S minus T, okay, that's going to be the same as R minus T union S minus T. Right? This makes to say I'm taking all of the elements that are in R or S and then taking out all the elements that are in T. Well, that's the same thing as taking the elements that are in T out first and then taking the union of everything that's left, isn't it? Now, from the left hand side, it's a little bit different. We're going to see some changes in operation. If I have some set R minus the set S union T, right? So this is basically saying I'm looking at everything in R that's not in S or T. Well, that's going to be the same thing as R minus S intersection with R minus T. Right, so we switch from union to intersection. And the reason why is, think about this, think about if this was still union, well, I could have something in R that's in T, and that's still going to be present over here. So if I unioned it, I would get something on this side that's not in here, because here I'm taking out S and T at the same time. Okay, so give yourself some time to think about that, why we're changing that sign, but it's fairly intuitive. And of course, I can do this with my other operations, kind of switching the role of union and intersection. If I have R minus S intersection T, that's the same as R minus S union R minus T. Okay, so these are our common laws. And we have one more set of laws. I'm going to go ahead and have to clear my blackboard for these. So if you need to write these down, go ahead and pause it here. But this last set of laws, just like when we're talking about propositions, we have these laws called De Morgan's laws. Now, in propositions, De Morgan's laws had to do with taking the negative of an entire compound proposition, right? Negating this compound propositional statement. And basically, each, um, each simple proposition became negated, and we changed from AND to OR or from OR to AND. Now, in this set operations, we're doing something similar, but instead of taking a negation, we're taking a complement, right? So if I have S union T, and I take the complement, of that entire thing, right? So S union T, that means anything in S or T, the complement of that is going to be everything else, right? Everything in my universal set that's not in S union T, right? Or in other words, everything that's not in S and is not in T, right? We see that this is everything in S or T, so the complement of that is everything that's not in S and is not in T. Okay, so we're switching again, just like we did with our propositional uh, statements with De Morgan's. And of course, I can you know, switch these signs. S intersection T, that means that everything that's in both. So the complement is going to be everything that's not in both. Or in other words, everything that's not in S or is not in T. Or everything that's in S complement, union, T complement. Okay, so those are De Morgan's laws. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, this ends our basic set um, theory, just kind of the definitions of all the operations and some of these propositions and things. And in the next couple of sections of um, our set theory, we're going to be talking about um, using these set operations, proving different uh, ideas in set theory, how to prove that sets are equivalent, things like that. And uh, we'll see you in those future videos.